15 years ago when I first came to this country, I was surprised, shocked, someone scandalized by the things you Americans do. Sometimes it was pleasant surprise, a nice change of pace from the Polish ways of doing, like Polish ways of driving is crazy. Some other times I would be scratching my head and thinking, why? One of the pleasant surprises was the number of showers. And no, I'm not talking about the shower stalls or the fact that unlike French, we take shower every day, but I'm talking about the shower parties you keep throwing for every occasion. There is a baby shower, there is a wedding shower. I even got a few invitations for divorce shower. <laughs> I imagine an excuse is good to get gifts, right? As long as there is a reason to party and make your friends bring something to you, why not? I have not seen yet a funeral shower. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps we could start a new tradition. But statistics will tell us that Americans are one of the most generous nations on this planet. We are not Mr. Grinch. We like to share. We open our hearts, our wallets, our homes when we see people in need. Of course, it is easy with our friends and neighbors and family members when we go to their baby showers or wedding showers or divorce showers, but we also are happy to help people we don't know. It happens every time there is a disaster somewhere else in the world. And Americans do open their pockets. They generously share what they have with people they have never met, people they probably never will meet. This is something we should be proud of. This is something that probably is the best diplomatic policy of this country. Be generous. Don't be a Grinch. Share what you have. Perhaps those Magi from the East came from the States because they are so generous. Again, there is very little we know about them. We don't know the number, we don't know the gender, but we know that they are called Magi. Another word that could be used in English translation would be a sorcerer or seer. Someone who discerns the future and the wisdom of this world, looking at the world around him or her. Interestingly enough, Bible, the Hebrew scriptures, calls sorcerers an abomination. Being a magi was strictly forbidden by the Jewish religion. Practicing this kind of wisdom was a big no-no. For any Jewish person to even talk to a Magi would make you unclean. This was something not permissible. So you see that baby Jesus is getting reputation even since his early days. He is hanging out with the wrong crowd from day one. And yet, even despite their being an abomination, they are generous people. They present gifts to a newborn baby that they discern will be someone special. I have a few friends who are Mormons, and they tell me, that tithing is not enough. In a Mormon church, if you can tithe, 10% is the bare minimum. It's usually 20, 25%. I have to admit, sometimes I'm jealous, but most of the time I am very happy with the generosity of our parishioners and friends. Perhaps we are not Mormons, but we do have 
very much open and generous hearts. But today, I would like to challenge all of us to think for a moment about what we give to God. Everybody knows that Americans are generous people. We give happily and freely to others. But what do we give to God? One hour a week when we come to church? That's good. What else can we offer to God that would be a testament to our generosity? If we are so happy and willing to share with others, even with people we don't know, what can I share with God? What can I give to someone that I believe is the most important person in my life? If I can be so generous with my friends, with my family, with my neighbors, can I be generous with God? Do I make time for God in daily life? Is it just a weekly occurrence? Do I find time with my family to pray together, to talk about God, about religion? Do I give witness to my faith, to my neighbors, to my co-workers, to my friends, to my roommates, to my customers, to my clients? All these things can be gifts we offer to God. It is easy to focus our prayer on asking. We usually ask when we pray, Oh God, give me good health, protect my family, protect my children, I pray for good test results, for a better paycheck, for a good job, for good health, for a healing of this and that person, and that's good. But what can I give to God besides asking all the time? Can we give God our time, our treasure, our talent? Someone said that there is more joy in giving than in receiving. We keep receiving blessings from God every day. Think today how much you are blessed with your family, with your partner, with your children, with your parents, with your work, with the church, with reasonably good health. What can you give in return to God? How can you show your gratitude? What gifts will you bring to God when you meet God face to face? May your prayer, may your daily life, May your worship, may your ministry be a gift you bring to God. Amen.